good morning, it's time to rise and shine. Good morning, good morning, good morning, I hope you're feeling fine. Good morning, get up, get out of bed, it's time to wake up, you sleepyhead. Time to wake up, it's a brand new day, and we can't miss out on that day to decay. Get your day planned out to be at your best, and you gotta make sure you got the right back test. Wipe the sleep away, make sure you're awake, cause we don't have time for fat finger mistakes. And race your condos will pay the bills, but you gotta be quick to get those fills. Follow your plan to keep your pockets thick, if that market gaps up, look for Uncle Rick. Small gap down means it's time for a duck, but if it doesn't set up, then we don't give up. Good morning everybody, we know why we came here today, now let's get to it. Yeah. Let's go! Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Today is December 15th, halfway through December. Getting closer to Christmas. Hope everybody had a good night. Pretty flat market. S&P up less than one point. NASDAQ up 44, Russell up five and a half, Dow down 13, gold slightly green, silver slightly red, bond slightly green, note slightly red, 10 year yield pretty flat, oil up about a third of a percent, natty gas up 3%, grains a little bit mixed and flat, euro in the pound slightly red. Bitcoin down over one and a half percent and VIX down 2.3 percent, trading around 1219. That might just be the first time you've you've uh, joined in the morning session, be more trader. It's not as good as power hour, but it does the trick. All right, S&P dipping into the red now. Opt for dollar. How do you mark the chart on today's range? So on toss, <clears throat> uh, I wait till the market opens. This is from yesterday. <clears throat> but you just, uh, on toss, you would right click, add drawing, and then add a price level this one here and so when, once the market opens the expected move today is around 22 which can be found here on the option chain zero dte plus or minus looks like 21.76 now so after the market opens i'll just manually mark that on my chart <laughs> are you saying you want more live Performances, Ken? <laughs> yeah, from the opening price. Yep. I'll do it here, here in a few minutes. I'll show you what I do. <clears throat> opening bell in a little over a minute. So not not much setting up today. Maybe JSPs. Since the s and is down a little bit, but too much of a vol contraction for me to sell premium this morning. Might get in a little quiet lunch later if it qualifies. So this will probably be a quick, uh, <clears throat> pretty short live stream here this morning. But if you all have any questions or topics you wanted to cover, we could certainly do that.
There is the bell. <clears throat> yeah, so today's expected move range about 21 point, call it 21.7. So I would just hover over the first five minute bar here. The opening price was 47.14. That'd be about 36 on the upside, a little under 36 on the upside. And then a little under 92 on the downside. So about right there. So JSPs did are in qualifying mode. So if price pushes above the open, <clears throat> then my JSPs will kick in. Uh, Trade Steward does use like five seconds after the open to use its opening price. So it's not going to be exactly the same as the opening tick for SPX, but. If we make a push up, it should uh, trigger an entry. Well, and it already triggered an entry. So it must have used an opening tick here down towards the bottom of this bar. <clears throat> so I'm in the JSPs, which is short the 4710s. Yes, Dark Avenger. <clears throat> I need to figure that out. I actually posted the uh, morning update. I forgot to do that. So I planned on doing it live with you all. So next week, nothing on Monday, nothing on Tuesday. Wednesday, consumer confidence, which is not a big deal. Unemployment pre-market Thursday. So really not a lot going on next week. So. It is the week before Christmas. So the week of Christmas, between Christmas and New Year's, I'll definitely be very light on calendars, but. Uh, going into this week, I don't think there's any reason to, to, uh, lighten up too much. Um, so I'm going to go with a, three, five. Well, let's start at the most recent as far as the nearest time. So 215. I'll do a four seven. So I'll do a four seven. And a I'll do a four seven and a six seven. I'll do a three five. And a three seven. Yeah, so I'll do a four seven, six seven, three five, and three seven. So 
So I'm going to update my positions and updates here. Four, seven, six, seven, three, five, and three, seven, DTE. All right, just updated that in the positions and updates. Meanwhile, SPX, not doing much yet. VIX popped up a little bit after the open. It's only down 1%. Yeah, Lasoza. So Trade Steward uses a opening price five seconds after the open. And so the market kind of marked down on the open. And so they used a little bit lower price. So when it bounced up just a little bit, Trade Steward triggered. I wish it was more exactly at the open, but based exactly on the SPX open, but for whatever reason, they have to use five seconds after the market opens as their opening price. I'm in the 4710, 4630s. And you'll notice that too. I, I noticed that during power hour one time, when it was right on the right on the line between like an up day and a normal day, right at that you know 0.5 percent higher on the day, it didn't trigger because it used just a slightly different opening price. So just something to be aware of. Not a uh, meaningful difference one way or another. You just need to understand what they use as their opening price. S&P down 10, NASDAQ, the strongest, still green. Looking through the different futures, seeing if there's any futures trades I want to take. Nothing I'll take at this point. <clears throat>
MRP, are you on here this morning? I just saw your message. So for my uh, my Rick trade. So your question is about the the time frame. So I have my time frame to be a little bit flexible between the open and ten fifteen a.m. Um, and so, what's what's your question? How does it how does the back test decide when to open? I mean, it's basically if if this criteria is met. So if you look at the trade log, what you'll notice is that it it usually opens near the open. I just I did that just to, uh just to play around to see you know I tested different time frames between the open and ten fifteen, and um and just really found opening some time between that period was um was what I wanted to do so that's why I have that what I do is not always going to be exactly like the back test I'm not always going to open right at the open but. Uh, you can see the trade log pretty much does, unless the uh, criteria doesn't fit right at the open. Then you'll see sometimes it opens a little bit later, but that's all that is. On November 14th. I would assume it's, yeah, if you look at VIX, well, I don't know, actually, now that you mentioned that. Oh, that was November 14th. Hang on. Uh, November 14th. Yeah, so it looked like price must have been below 14 the VIX must have been below 14 and it popped up and that's when it triggered because I have a minimum VIX filter of 14. So that's, that's what it would have been. Yeah. JSP is up 20%. So reducing my stop. On my JSPs. So when it gets to 20%, I don't take any off. I just reduce my stop on the JSPs. Yeah, anytime you have a time range like that on your back test, it looks at what all your criteria and, you know, if, if all the criteria fits at the open, it's going to open, you know, first time all the criteria fits during that time frame. But if it, uh, but if it doesn't fit at the open, that but it does at some point during that time range, then it will, then it would trigger a trade is how that is how the back test does it. Uh, Ed HNC, any recommended reading with options experience to learn futures? Um, not really. I mean, futures, you can really just think of futures trading. I mean, it's it's very similar, like just the trading, it's a stock. I mean, you're just buying or shorting it. The only difference is well, I mean, there's a lot of differences, but the main difference is a your you know futures are very leveraged, you know, so you're making a certain amount per point, um, and then futures also have expirations, so you just want to make sure that you're in the 
most active cycle, meaning the one that has the most volume. Um, you know, there's just, there's a lot of little nuances just as far as how much each tick is worth, you know, S and P is worth 50 bucks per point. So if you're long one contract for every point it moves in your favor, you're making $50 every point it moves away, you're, you're losing $50, you know, and then each, every contract, you know, NASDAQ is 20 bucks a point. Dow is 10 bucks a point, you know, so you, you just, you got to just kind of learn what the tick values are for each one, uh, which in our, in our futures option, futures options course, we, we have a kind of a cheat sheet with, with a lot of that stuff. Um, the futures options course doesn't talk really about specifically trading the underlying futures, but, um, it'll give you a good idea of the kind of the size of each one. There's no uniformity whatsoever in the futures market. There's different exchanges and they have different values and, you know, notes and bonds are still on fractional versus decimal systems, which is kind of crazy. Um, yeah, thanks, Anil. T uh, Tasty would be a, um, a decent place as well to kind of learn some of that stuff. And you've got the regular size futures, like ES is the normal S&P futures. And then there's the micro, which is MES. It's one-tenth of the size. A lot of the, a lot of the futures have micro contracts now. Most of them are fairly liquid. Some are not. Like the grains, the micro, soybean, wheat, corn, those are still fairly illiquid. I've, I've traded them. They're, they're tradable, but just not as nearly as liquid. The micro S&P... NASDAQ, Russell, Dow, those are all fine. Micro gold, um, micro oil, micro natty gas, euro pound, those are all. And the micros are really good starting contracts because they're you can get pretty small size. <clears throat> SPX just kind of chopping around. So today we had Empire State Manufacturing Index report pre-market. Um, I guess just three minutes ago, we had the Flash Manufacturing and Services PMI. Apparently that didn't mean anything. And that's it for news today. JSP is back down to about even. I would need a push up to basically right around 47.24 to hit. If it happened quickly, wouldn't have to go quite that high if it happened slowly as theta decays.
Yeah, I already reduced my stop. Yep, it was at 20%. Dick K, remove trailing stop. So on my JSP, remove trailing stop. Yeah, that did do better. All right. I didn't, uh, I never trailed the stop anyway. I don't know why I had trailing stop on my back test. I would ratchet it down after it got to 20%, but I guess maybe when I did my OCOs, I was trailing it. But yeah, that certainly improves it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I don't know why I had a trailing stop on there because I never trailed it. That's okay. Well, good. Well, I was trading it right. I was trading it the better way. I just didn't have it set up in my back test correctly. Not sure that that's good or bad. Yeah, it makes me feel good about myself. All right, my friends, so I'm going to jump off here unless there's anything else. We will be back for Power Hour Live. We can get a push up to above 4720. We'll be getting close to hitting profit targets on our JSPs. Quiet lunch qualifies. I'll trade one of those. As per the uh the one in my in my plan, it's the early lunch, the 1050 one. So we'll see if that happens. Otherwise, we will see you all for power hour. Take care. <laughs>